Hi, this is Mike from Microfocus Customer Care. The purpose of this video is to walk through installing and configuring the NetIQ Identity Manager Java Remote Loader on a Linux server. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to refer to the NetIQ Identity Manager product as just IDM. The IDM Remote Loader allows an IDM driver to run on a connected system without having the IDM engine installed on that server. IDM has a few different types of remote loaders. However, in this video, we're going to cover the Java-based remote loader. The Java remote loader is generally used to run where a native remote loader is not compatible with the operating system. The Java remote loader does not have an install associated with it, so it is portable and can work with any publicly supported version of the JRE as long as the JRE is version 5 or above. So let's get started. If you want to follow along in the documentation, you can go to www.netiq.com slash documentation. I will show you here on my browser where that is. From the main documentation site, scroll down and click Identity Manager. This will take us to the main IDM 4.5 documentation site. A few lines down is the setup guide. After clicking on the setup guide, choose the left menu item called Installing and Managing Remote Loader. Then choose Installing Remote Loader. And finally, Installing Java Remote Loader. Let's just briefly take a look at my server setup. I have two Linux servers both in a virtual environment. One is a SUSE Linux Enterprise Server and one is a Red Hat Enterprise Linux Server version 7.1. The Red Hat Server, the one here showing the browser, is going to be my connected server. This is where I'm going to run the Java Remote Loader. It does not currently have any IDM components installed on it. The SLES server is where the IDM engine is installed. So let's look at the documentation. Step 1 and 2 talk about copying the application shim. Let's jump over to the SLES server where the engine is installed. On the server where the IDM engine is installed, there is a default directory where the application shim or the actual driver jar files are located. The files are located in the directory opt novel e directory lib dirxml classes. If we list this directory, you will see a bunch of jar files. These are the actual driver jar files that the remote loader will use to communicate with a connected application. We will want to move these files over to the connected system. You don't need to move all the files. If you know exactly which files you need, then move just those files over. Jumping back over to the Red Hat server, as you can see I've already copied the driver jar files over to a temporary directory slash temp slash drivers. Step 3 in the documentation wants us to verify the Java version on the connected system. Since the Red Hat server comes with a Java installed, I can type Java version in a terminal to verify the Java version. As you can see, we are on JRE 1.7 which is well above the system requirements. The next few steps talk about where we get the Java remote loader files and how to install them. Step 5 shows you two options of where you might get the Java remote loader files. Option A is your best bet, which is getting them from the IDM DVD or ISO, which you can get from the NetIQ download site. Option B says you can download just the Java remote loader files but I've investigated this and the files are not available in a standalone software package patch or service pack. On the Red Hat server, I have an IDM 4.5 ISO already mounted. The server automatically mounted the ISO at slash run media admin. Yours may be different on other flavors of Linux or Unix. The root ISO directory is dot slash IDM 4.5 underscore lin. And so we want to go into the products directory, then IDM, then into the Java remote loader directory. 
If we list this directory, we see three compressed files. Since we are on a Linux system, we want the two files, durxml underscore jremote underscore dev and the durxml underscore jremote. If we were on a mainframe system, we would replace the durxml underscore jremote with the durxml underscore jremote underscore mvs file. The documentation states to copy the targz files over to the server, but we can just extract the files directly from the mounted ISO. I have previously set up a directory to extract these files to. Remember, you can basically place these files anywhere you need them to be. I have the extract command in my history, so let's find that. My directory is slash user slash IDM slash RL. First, let me extract the underscore dev file and then the dirksml underscore jremote file. If we go look at my user IDM RL directory, it shows the files and directories that were extracted. These are all the files needed to run the Java remote loader minus the driver shim jar files. If we go to the temporary driver directory where we copied all the driver jar files over from the engine server, we can now copy the needed driver jar files into our new Java remote loader area. If we are going to install multiple drivers on the connected server and we are unsure what exact files we need, we would copy all these files over to the Java remote loader directory in the lib directory. However, in this video, we are only going to install one driver, the delimited text driver. It is a simple driver to set up remotely and we are able to tell the exact files we need based on the name of the jar files. There are only a couple of files with the word delimited text, so I'm going to just grab those two files and copy them to the appropriate directory. Remember, we want to copy them to the lib directory under the location we have set aside for the Java remote loader. Now, if we go over to our completed Java Remote Loader directory, we have all the files necessary to run the Java Remote Loader. Back in the docs, step 9 talks about making sure your Java is reachable. If we type Java at any path in the terminal, it will execute. Some Java implementations are limited by path statements or writes. If we just type Java at the terminal, we see that it is accessible. If your Java or JRE is not accessible, then you will need to change the Java Remote Loader Startup script. If you edit the DirxML underscore remote script and scroll all the way to the bottom, there is a line that executes the Java and starts the Java Remote Loader. My Java is executable, so I'm not going to change it. But if you need to, put in the full path to the Java executable. While we're editing this script file, we need to change one line. The jar list line needs to have a valid directory. By default, it lists the directory structure for a server with the IDM engine installed. We need to change this to where our current driver files are located. The video shows this path to be USR IDM RL, but I actually had to change this later by adding the lib directory because this is actually where my files are. Then go ahead and save this file. The last step in setting up the Java Remote Loader is dealing with the Remote Loader configuration file. The Java Remote Loader provides a sample configuration file. Let's cat the sample file and see what it looks like. As you can see, there are a few parameters in the configuration file. We should not change the sample file. 
we should make a copy of it and use the copy to make our own configuration file. We will just put it in the same location and call it myconfig.txt. Now let's edit our new configuration file. Each parameter starts with a dash and then a parameter name. Then there is a space followed by the parameter value. Some are in quotes and some are not. These parameters are not in any particular order. The first one is command port. Command port is used by the driver instance for control purposes. It is always used and this port should be open on the server. It is needed when you have multiple drivers on the same server and the remote loader needs to communicate with individual drivers. The connection port is a multi-element parameter. This line is quoted with spaces between parameters. This parameter is for connection and security values. When the driver is set up for security communications to the engine, which will be discussed in a different video, you would put the key store and KMO values on this line as well. For this driver, we will add some connection parameters regarding IP addresses. Trace level is not required, but I want to change my trace level to 5 for this driver. Then there's trace file, and this is the path and file name to the remote loader log file. It is used heavily when troubleshooting a remote loader driver. The last line is the Java class. This parameter must match the driver you are running. Notice by default this config file has the delimited text class. If we jump back to the documentation and click on configuring the remote loader and drivers and then click on understanding and configuring the parameters And we scroll to the bottom of this page, we see a list of all the class parameters that could be put on this line. It is important to put the correct class for the driver you are running. If you scroll up on this page, you will see a complete list of parameters that could be put in this configuration file. For the basic driver to work, the current settings are sufficient. I went ahead and added some non-required settings to the connection parameter. I'm also going to add a description line, which is a good idea if you have multiple drivers running. I'm going to save this file now and now we have a completely configured driver ready to start. The only thing we need to change at this point is the passwords. First, I'm going to go over to our engine server and use designer to set the remote loader password and the driver object password. These are passwords that get set so both the drivers and the remote loader can log into each other. In designer, I'm going to go through the properties of the driver. During the installation of the driver in Designer, you are asked to create both the driver object password and the remote loader password. Those passwords would work, but I'm going to show you how to change them on an already configured driver. I'm going to first set the driver object password by removing the current password and then creating a new password. I'm going to set it to my first name, Mike. Now, I'm going to set the remote loader password we can set a different password, but for simplicity, I'm going to just set the same password of Mike. Now I'm going to save this driver and deploy this driver. So eDirectory is updated.
Now we can switch back to the connected system. The first thing we need to do is set the password on the remote loader and configure driver. We do this by running the duraxml underscore jremote script with some parameters. We add the dash config and then the configuration file name. And then we use the dash sp parameter followed by the two passwords we set in designer. We need to make sure that they are in the correct order. The remote loader password is first and the driver object password is second. In this case, both are the same, so we put Mike and then Mike. Now this command only sets the password. It does not actually run the Java remote loader. We only need to do this once to set the passwords. If we use the ps command to check if the remote loader is running, you can see that it's not. Now we remove the dash sp parameter and the Java remote loader will start. If you notice that when you run it this way, the prompt does not return. So I'm going to control C this and then run the command with an ampersand so we get our shell back. Now we can run the ps command and see the remote loader is running. It is now running and waiting for connection from the driver on the engine side. So let's go start the driver in designer. Now we can go back to the connected system and verify that the remote loader is connected and running with the remote loader trace. So we can go to our slash temp directory and look at the DTRL log, which is our trace file, and see what messages are in there. I'm going to tail dash F this file, and we can see that there are some messages that give us a good indication that this driver is connected and running. As you can see, there is a enter listener accept message. There is an opening connection message, and it shows some server socket information. This is all a good indication that the two sides have connected and are properly running. So that's about it for a simple install and configuration of the Java Remote Loader driver. Thanks for watching. This is Mike from Microfocus, checking out.